Disaffected, disconnected and defiant, so far loyalist youths have refused to heed a call from the First Minister to stop their protests. They're the latest generation to take to the streets venting their anger over issues that include cultural identity and relations with nationalism. We'll be discussing those issues and more with our guests shortly. But first, our political correspondent Martina Purdy has been assessing just how big a threat the protests are to Peter Robinson and the DUP. People power, 70s style. We are sharing, no surrender! The problem was power sharing, and it was loyalist mass protests like these, coupled with street violence that helped collapse Stormont and force the unionist leader and Prime Minister Brian Faulkner from office. Today's demonstration clearly is a focal point of confidence and certainty for the loyalists. But 40 years on, that confidence has faded. The loyalists are still protesting, albeit in smaller numbers. So how big a threat are they to the stability of Stormont and the current unionist leadership? These angry youths are dangerous and damaging, but for veterans of the Troubles, the demand of some that Peter Robinson should quit is no more than a cry in the dark as politics here has changed too much. I don't think that the protests are in any way a threat to Peter Robinson or the leadership of the DUP because politics has changed in Northern Ireland. The electoral system has changed. We can only judge Peter Robinson by the electoral figures. That's how you judge the success of, of a political party. It is Peter Robinson that has now taken us to being the largest unionist party. So he's no Brian Faulkner? He's no Brian Faulkner. Much of the protest has been centred in Peter Robinson's East Belfast constituency and has moved beyond grievances over the Union flag coming down over City Hall. There's clear hostility to him and the Good Friday Agreement from a post-Troubles generation of loyalists who were children when it was signed. You've seen in uh, 1998, you know, Trimble got a massive mandate, but within a short number of years, that turned drastically once people seen how it was actually going. And I think we're seeing the same situation here. We need to remember that Peter Adams and the DUP hounded David Trimble out of the office, branded him a Lundy, branded him a traitor. Peter Adams made a comment in 1998 that the only cabinet the Provo should be in was made of wood and brass handles. Peter Adams has delivered the chief of staff of the IRA in the joint first minister's position of this country. Others point to clear pressures on the first minister. He's in an extremely difficult job with his own hard liners. I mean, I have to remember the whole background of that. I mean, Paisley appealing to the, the most intransigent people. They're still in that party, so they're, they're difficult. He's bringing them along. So what's the view from the First Minister's office? I've had many challenges, and I'm sure we'll have many more challenges in the, the, the months and years ahead. Everyone recognised that we were in a process. That process will have its ups and downs, it will have its difficult times, it will have rocky moments, uh, and it is having that at the present time. But I believe that the overwhelming desire of people in Northern Ireland is to have a peaceful and stable Northern Ireland. Peter Robinson, once the Young Turk challenging authority, has dismissed the Ulster People's Forum, which has sprung from the protest, as being bankrupt of ideas after it suggested direct rule as an alternative. As Peter put out the other night, he dismissed us. Um, you know, I'm not sure what word he used, but I think he just basically thinks we're um, a couple of Egypts running about on the street. So if Peter Thompson chooses to think that, then I don't think Peter Thompson should be worried at all. Maybe he should just get on with his work and not panic. Despite the DUP leader's call for a halt to protest, some DUP figures have been present on the ground. Though it's not clear if this is a party split or a political tactic to keep grassroots on board, what is clear is that Peter Robinson's demands for the protest to end have been ignored. After that, he looks weak. Um, but, I mean, I wouldn't like to be in this position. It's extremely difficult, but he does need to, to uh, somehow grasp this and really get more involved and more uh, spelling it out in detail as to what's, what's needed and the sort of future that, that we, we need to have here. Peter Robinson has begun by setting up a unionist forum to address grievances, while the Ulster People's Forum is planning its own consultation. One of its key players is set to contest the Mid-Ulster by-election this spring under a victim's banner. Willie Fraser's previous attempts to get elected have failed miserably, but others think a new political party may be in the making. I am impressed at 
some of the young people who are now speaking on behalf of the demonstrators. They are quite articulate. There's obviously a new breed of politicians coming to the fore in Northern Ireland. They may get together and form their own political party. I think there's a, a case for it in that uh, what is generally referred to as the working class loyalist people don't really have spokesmen in the assembly. Those who say they want a peaceful, loyalist revolution are consulting through their own forum, but aren't too sure what the future holds. I don't know where I'll see myself or the, the Protestant community in 10 weeks, never mind 10 years. It's a very fluid situation, and that's, you know, uh, in one sense, that's a danger of it, but in another sense, it, it's a beauty of it. Nobody knows where this is going to go. Well, I'm joined by DUP MP Nigel Dodds, Sinn Féin's Jerry Kelly, Stuart Dixon from the Alliance Party and Johnny Harvey representing the PUP. Mr Dodds, I'll come to you first of all. Uh, your party leader has said that the Ulster People's Forum are bankrupt of ideas. What's your view on the demonstrators? Well, I think that what we are seeing um, is the playing out, not just of issues concerning the Union flag, which we, of course, uh, totally oppose the taking down of the Union flag on 365 days of the year. We believe it should be there the whole year round. We led that campaign in the City Council. So we empathise entirely. We understand and lead that concern in terms of what people are saying out there. But I think it also is a culmination of concerns about other issues, like the one-sided inquiry process that we have highlighted in Westminster, we drew this to the attention of the Prime Minister only yesterday, and a number of other issues. I mean, the union, as we saw in terms of surveys, is more secure than ever. But it's clear that Sinn Féin, through uh, some of its tactics, has decided to wage some kind of cultural war, it seems to be, in terms of some of the symbolism and some of the issues that are dear to unionist hearts and in that way have stirred up a real hornet's nest. And I think it's incumbent on Sinn Féin and the Republicans to step back and think what, what damage they are doing to moving Northern Ireland forward, because we don't want to go back to direct rule, which was Dublin rule. We don't want to go back to the dark days of the past. We want to keep moving forward. But really, there's a heavy responsibility on Republicans to live up to their responsibility and not engage in this kind of cultural warfare that they seem to be enjoying doing far too much. Jerry Kelly, so it's partly your fault? <laughs> it's an interesting concept. Uh, what we're dealing with here is not just Britishness, we're dealing with Irishness. The whole debate has been centred around this uh, issue of Britishness, but the actual facts, which is separate perception from, from the facts and reality. As we sit here in uh, the City Hall, over 95% of all the emblems are colonial, imperial, and to do with uh, British. The city itself is now if you, as close to 50-50 as you will get. Uh, there is Irishness there, there is no recognition, no idea within this pan-unionist forum of dealing with Irishness. Is there even an outreach uh, project within that forum uh, to talk to uh, uh, um, nationalists and, and, and Republicans? This idea that the whole thing is around a flag or indeed Britishness is actually more perception than it is reality. What, what is the protest over? The protest is actually over the fact that a compromise was reached on the issue of uh, culture and of, of uh, uh, Britishness and Irishness. And that's what the protest is against. It is not um, against the whittling away of Britishness. That's a bit of a nonsense. Johnny Harvey, you've obviously been central to the protest. Is that part of the problem from um, the opponents of your group, that you just don't, you're in denial about the fact that it's a shared city, that there are Catholics who live in Belfast and that they don't want to see the flag every day? I don't think anybody's in denial. I think the problem is that this is being passed over as some sort of, you know, uh, equal treatment um, you know i don't understand how removing the flag completely from two buildings and flying it on designated days on one other building is some sort of compromise that seems like a token gesture to me but when it comes to it um, you do the, there has been a great deal of opposition towards the dup from the protesters have you anything to say to nigel dodds on that tonight what what is the reason behind the protesters having this disaffection with the dup I think there's obviously the perception there that uh, the DUP have marched us into this situation um, and there is obviously the problem in, in areas like East Belfast where you know we have a, uh, more alliance councillors and more alliance MLAs than we would have had and that has felt that that was a, a protest vote against the DUP and against Peter Robinson. Um, so those issues are coming to the forefront and because of that it's very hard for the protesters then to trust that party. 
And I mean, I think that uh, Johnny's raised a number of issues there. And I mean, you raised the point about more alliance councillors in a heavily unionist area of East Belfast than there are, uh, you know, compared to what it should be in terms of unions. And that's an issue we all have to address. I mean, not that we're sort of saying the alliance electorate party behind. have the right to get elected. Of course they do, stand for election. But I mean, I think that we, we need to see more unionists in the city council. This wouldn't have happened had there been more unionists in the city council representing unionist people. But I mean, I do think we have to recognise that, and I'm not putting Johnny in this position, but I mean, I think there are some people involved in this campaign and, and, and have come into the fore uh, who have been long term opponents of the DUP and have stood for election saying the sorts of mm -hmm. things that have been said about mm -hmm. wanting to go back to direct rule, about, about uh, Sinn Féin and government and all of that sort of stuff, and have been rejected by but, the unions. But talking people. to some of the protesters on the street this week, people have been saying no more them and us. They're not talking about Catholics and Protestants. They're talking about the DUP on the hill in their fancy offices while they're left yeah, behind. Well, I mean, I think it's inevitable when people, and I mean, remember, there are issues. I deal with these issues day and daily in North Belfast, and we work closely. I've just come from a meeting, a two-hour meeting tonight with community leaders and other leaders in terms of talking talking about issues, not, not about the flag, but about a number of issues. And I hear uh, people are concerned. There's an economic recession on, there's lots of issues. What we have got to do is work together at a community level, political level, civic level, right across the board. That's part of the reason why the unionist forum has been set up. But not why to not dictate. invite the protesters to the well, forum? Surely there's a sense of well, urgency for everybody else living I, I, I in Northern think, Ireland. I think, though, it has to be said, I mean, they made it clear they wouldn't come anyway. But, I mean, the point is that's not going to deter us because even around that table today, it's not easy getting everybody together. People with different agendas, different views and all the rest of it. But all we have in common is a support for the union, wanting to move forward. And part of the task of the unionist forum now has got to be, if it's going to be relevant and work, is to get out there and engage. And we have said through working, working groups, task force, okay. to get out there and engage with protests, with everybody. And I mean, this will strengthen the political process as a whole. It's good for unionism to come together and talk okay. like this, but this will also strengthen the political process <laughs> overall, <laughs> because well, at the end of the day, we will be in a much more cohesive position in terms of taking on republicanism and everything else. How can sit there with a straight face and argue that unionists get in together, get into a forum, refusing to speak to the alliance, to uh, Sinn well, Féin, to... Well, they aren't invited, nonsense. they aren't there, they aren't the, there. The, the DUP and not was in the not Northern Ireland executive. Union, not, not talking to Sinn Féin, not talking to the SDLP. How can you, with a straight face, argue that because this is good because, for nationalism. Because, Jay, How can you do it? Because we can do two things at one time. We can talk to unionism, we can bring unionism together, work on the issues of concern that are out there that have been identified by some of us for a long time and are coming to the fore, and at the same time, we can carry forward in a political process. We were in the Northern Ireland Executive this afternoon well, with Sinn okay. Féin and ministers, and Alliance, Alliance ministers, and unionist ministers working make, together. It isn't an either I'll or. One, Gentlemen, one, sorry, let's bring one it to this, this, this will go to or. the lowest common denominator in unionism. Just to get a word in edgeways. I mean, I'm amazed at Nigel Dodds and his description of the forum. The forum seems to be some sort of political epiphany for for the DUP and and for the Ulster unionists that they've all Read, uh, just discovered this week that they need to be talking to people. No, Sorry, that's what politics is about. That's what I've done since I was elected in 1977. I've been talking to people. I represent people. Mm -hmm. I listen to what they say and, I, I, and, I, and my opinion is moved and changed and amended by what I hear people asking me to do. That is how I hear this forum being described. Well, I, I, I hear it being <laughs> described. Well, Nigel's just said that it's about listening to people. It's about going yes. out and talking to people. Yes. It's about taking their concerns yes. on. And, and we heard in the piece, it's about education. It, it's about all of the issues of social deprivation and unemployment. That's right. That's what politics is about. Yes. That's what I was elected to deliver. Yes. And Sinn Féin aren't going to get off the hook tonight either. The, the reality is that we have the, 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 the unrest of the moment uh, and we have other people stoking up on the background further issues. We have Gerry Adams coming along uh, insisting on a border poll. We don't need a border poll. We know. Mm. We know what the people of Northern Ireland want. They want to remain in then the United Kingdom. why are you afraid Kingdom. of a border poll? I'm not scared of a well, border must poll. Be you just simply don't well, yeah. need one, Jerry. Well, you know as well as I how, do. You know as well as I do. That the people of Northern Ireland the don't need a border poll. That's what politics because, is about because, as well. Put because, it to the they, vote. because, because, quite simply, we do not need a border poll to tell us what we already know. The vast majority of people in Northern Ireland wish to remain in the United Kingdom. At some stage, well, you in the didn't future, need forty thousand leaflets to tell us at about some stage, what the at some, to at some stage <laughs> in the future, at some stage in the future, we will 
have an appropriate border poll and people will be able to make that democratic decision. But I mean, what they want to do talking about jobs and the economy and yet they're, they're going down the road of looking for a border poll and the constitutional issue which has been settled. So I mean all this talk about they, wanting to concentrate on jobs and the economy is shown to be so much settled. nonsense they are, they are and that's winding the, winding the problem. They are up in the same way as the DUP wound the situation yeah. up in East Belfast. Well, we didn't bring, we didn't well, bring so forward you delivered the flags 40, issue. We well, delivered 40,000 leaflets telling a pack of lies to the people of East Belfast. It is not wrong. No, you're wrong. It's simply it's not wrong. You've repeated that a number of times and it's simply wrong. We have delivered a factual situation right you across Belfast which set out the facts and then told people to engage politically because what we want to do and is the to move people of that working people in a democratic and political process way. People and did, there's no point denying that fact. People simply did not engage in, in, in the way in which you invited them to do. And that's unfortunate. Well, it's more than the it is Sorry, gentlemen, I'm going to interrupt. Johnny Harvey, you joined the PUP today. Does that mean that you have accepted that you can actually only change the system if you're within the system? Um, I think it's important that the disaffected uh, loyalist unionists, whatever you want to call them, out there engage in the political process. Um, my personal opinion is that the PUP are a party that works hard on the ground. They're in with the people. They support the people. And I think that the PUP is one of those parties that will deliver and will hold things like the Unionist Forum to account. Because at the end of the day, the proof of the pudding's in the eating. It needs to deliver. Will you call on the UPV then to stop the protest, to bring it off the streets and get it back to politics again? I think people have the right to peaceful protest any time and we will always support the right to peaceful protest. I think what the protesters on the ground need to see is real action. Jerry Kelly, what has your party been doing in terms of reconciliation? Let's look at Limavady Council, for instance, on the flag issue. Well, it's another interesting uh, issue you raise because we, we come forward, Darkland County comes forward with uh, a, a process of reconciliation, a pro process of outward engagement. What reaction do we get from unionists? They start demanding you prove what reconciliation means. If they were really involved in reconciliation themselves or involved in engagement, what they would be saying was, OK, let's sit down and talk this out. And here's what we think reconciliation means from our point of view, and we would give ours. That's not what they're doing. But should Limavady Council make no, a gesture you can't, now? You cannot, well... Should the unionists make a gesture in, in all of those uh, um, areas where they are flying the flag and put the tricolour up as well? Well, do we need a common policy then? Well, Is that something course, that we've, everybody we need, needs to sit down and discuss? Of course we need a common policy and of course we all need to sit down and do it. But as was said today, the unionists in a pan-unionist forum sitting down is not going to resolve this issue, and that's very, very clear. It happened, something similar happened last year after the, the incidents around sectarian incidents around St. Patrick's, and what happened was the lowest common denominator was what came out. The main parties backed the protesters as opposed to saying, look, we need a bit more chance in this, and that's what will happen in this forum, I can guarantee it. Nigel Dodds, um, it's not looking very good for agreement on anything tonight, if tonight's anything to go by, but a common flags policy, is that something really that you and Sinn Féin need to sit down and work out? Well, we're prepared to talk about all of these issues, but I mean, Jerry Kelly, of course, avoided completely answering the question about Limavati, just ignored it, because he's faced with the fact that he says that what happened in Belfast was uh, was equality, compromise, but when Sinn Féin had the chance to vote for exactly the same thing in well, Limavati, they refused to vote for it. Me so, I mean, the fact of the matter ignore. is, the fact of the matter is that, you know, it's one policy for Belfast based oh. on equality, but it's a different policy when you're in control, oh, and that's fine. the problem that we have with Sinn Féin all the time. They're waging this kind of poking the knife into people, annoying the unionist community, doing it quite deliberately because they know they're not going to get a United Ireland. Their dream of 2016 and a United Ireland isn't going to happen. Well, and so we, well, so we're nervous? not nervous we're at all about nervous. it, but we want to get on with the real <laughs> issues. We want, to deal, about the we want to deal with the real issues. We want to deal with the real issues. I'm not get away by trying to talk over me. The real issues are in the jobs, the economies, our young people working on these issues. You're now trying to have a whole campaign about the border poll. One polls. question though, have your parties failed though in not coming out shoulder and shoulder, shoulder to shoulder in the way that you did in the past? Should the DUP and well, Sinn Féin not have come out together and tried to stop these protests? Well I mean I think the fact is that in today, I've mentioned it before, that it, it, today at the executive the DUP, Sinn Féin, Ulster Unionist Alliance Party, SDLP were round the table working on the issues that affect the people of Northern Ireland trying to move this province forward and we as a party in the DUP will We'll work with people in communities in our areas. We have been given the trust of many, many people in these areas. We will continue to work for those people very strongly, as I was tonight, okay. working with communities, civic leaders, political leaders. And I was accused of ignoring it. 
Sinn Féin's position in, in Belfast and all of the other councils is either no flag or both flags. Now that's a very simple, equality-based uh, pr approach. What happened in Belfast, what happened in Belfast was that Lance offered a compromise and we decided to go with it. Now, that's compromise. So the protests are about compromise. They're not about a solution that I would say. I'm an Irish Republican, right? I want to see equality. I want Irishness in, in, in the forefront, along with people's Britishness. I have no problem with people's Britishness. The problem here is okay. what they look upon Irishness as. Stuart Dixon, your party is very much borne the brunt of a lot of this. Uh, yeah. What's your way forward? What's your solution? Well, clearly, uh, what we need to deliver on, I was very disappointed to hear Peter Robinson equivocate on the CSI strategy uh, today. The we document need on the shared the future. The document on a comprehensive shared initiative for the future. And that is what we need. And that's the failure of both Sinn Féin and the DUP here tonight. But yet your point walked we, away from the discussion. Yes, because of the very issues that couldn't be resolved by both of those parties. We need to resolve the issue with regards to flags. We need to resolve the issue about proper shared living in Northern Ireland. We need to resolve the problem of the past. People have to step up to the mark and deal with those very serious issues. Because if they don't, we're just going to have more and more of these protests. But if the parties don't agree at Stormont, how can you ever expect people to agree on the streets? We were, they're, nev briefly. they're never going to agree on the streets. The only way we're going to agree is by sitting down and talking. I've been doing that and listening to people since I was elected in 1977. I'm delighted to be in the Northern Ireland Assembly. I'm delighted to take my role in that. And I will sit and listen to representatives from the DUP and Sinn Féin and the other parties there. And I will work my socks off around the table to deliver for people in Northern Ireland. We're in the midst of a world recession. We don't need violence. We need jobs. We need proper education. We need a good quality health service okay. that delivers for everybody in Northern Ireland, regardless of whether you're nationalist, unionist, Republican or Alliance. Gentlemen, thanks very much indeed for joining us this evening. Well, with me now in Commentator's Corner for our first programme of the new year, journalist Paul McFadden and Debbie Waters, who's involved in restorative justice. Debbie, you've been helping to convene some of the meetings to try to find a solution to the protests. Uh, based on that discussion, how hopeful are you? Well, Tara, we've just had a very healthy discussion and we've had 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. Um, and I'm not sure after that discussion we're going to come out of it, to be honest. But I am hopeful and here's why I'm hopeful. Um, working with people in East Belfast over the past week and involved with grassroots community workers, I feel people do want to find a solution to the problem. Do they want an end to the, pro the protests? I think they're two different issues. I think people really believe they have the right to peaceful protest. The issue now is that the protests are given rise to violence. And in my opinion, for that reason, we need to revisit the protests and the protests need to come to an end. But they need to come to an end without creating a vacuum. And the vacuum needs to be filled by a political process and a good community process that addresses the issues of social inequality that Stuart referred to. Well, um, you're also an independent member of the policing board and there have been a lot of uh, claims from loyalists about uh, treatment to them by the police. So what's your view on that? Well, we had a briefing today at the policing board from the chief constable and just to summarise that, I think personally the police are caught in the middle with this. They're policing a very, very, very difficult situation. So I think they need to be given some grace, but we can never accept bad policing and unprofessional policing. And I think over the past 40 days, the police have got a lot of things right. But at their own admission, they've got some things wrong. But in getting them wrong, they were willing to engage with community workers in East Belfast this week hold their hands up and try and map out a way forward. So I think that's healthy and good. Paul McFadden, how's all this uh, playing out in Derry? Well, Tara, I think people in Derry, by and large, would um, share the fears of, of people in the business community and uh, many people um, in other walks of life in Northern Ireland about the damage that this whole issue is doing to the, uh, the economy, the prospects for jobs and so on. Nigel Dodds mentioned tonight that uh, the real issues are jobs and the economy. But it was a very interesting phrase. I mean, Debbie is saying that she's optimistic. I think that the problem will be resolved. Uh, my difficulty is I'm not entirely sure what the problem is. Um, Jerry Moriarty, writing in the Irish Times this week, used a wonderful phrase. He talked about the uh, a, a dangerous incoherence on the streets of Belfast and elsewhere in North Ireland. And I don't know if the problem is about flags, about the chipping away of the identity, uh, trying to dethrone Peter Robinson, about alienation uh, of, of people in working class, loyalist communities, 
about deprivation, about jobs. I'm not entirely sure what the problem is, and, and there is a confusion surrounding it, and that is a, a bit of a difficulty. I don't know, for example, what, what these people in the, the task forces, uh, which are going to be dispatched by the Unionist Forum, are going to go and say to people. Are they going to go and say, look, you're going to get your flag up, you're going to get this, you're going to get that? Or are, you going to say, are they going to say, look, let's be realistic and try and address uh, how we arrive at an accommodation, uh, a shared future, in which all the people of Northern Ireland can, can raise together? Debbie, social media obviously has played an enormous part in these protests. Yeah. It's allowed people to find out where they're happening, go along to them, express their views. So let's look at the regular slot of the, the tweet of the week. Uh, yours was from Include Youth. Yes. yes. yes so uh, young people living in the most disadvantaged of our communities are becoming embroiled and consequently criminalised by disturbances on our streets. Why did you pick that one? Well, I chose that, Tara, because... And saying that we've the right to peaceful protest, we have to accept the consequences of the outworkings of that. And over the past 40 days, numerous young people have become caught up in the violence because they think it's sexy and because it's fun. And probably only for that reason, a lot of them have got involved. But they are being criminalised. 10, 11, 12 year olds are on the streets. And if we're really committed to a shared future, if we're really committed to rebuilding our communities, we have to be committed to giving our young people a future. Paul, uh, your tweet, uh, thankfully, is a bit more light-hearted to end this yeah. programme. Yeah, I find a wee bit of uh, light in the midst of uh, all of the gloom we've been hearing uh, tonight. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, from, uh, it's from Danny it's from Morrison. Danny Morrison, I think I can know if I see describe him as a veteran Republican. He celebrated his 60th birthday uh, yesterday. And he tweeted, it is my 60th birthday today and for some reason they've got the flags mixed up over Belfast City Hall. Oh well, thought that counts. So a bit of humour in the midst of all of the, the gloom recently. <laughs> and uh, Debbie, what about the, the week ahead then? What do you think is going to happen? Can we see an end to the protests in a week? I'm not sure, Tara, that we can. But looking ahead, I want to really concentrate on the Unionist Forum. Paul has mentioned, what will it deliver? Who will it engage with? And will it really make a difference? And I think a lot of people are looking at that. Let's give it a chance. It's the beginning of a process. And I think a process that will and will have to engage other political parties, including Sinn Féin and the Alliance at some stage, but Protestant unionist communities need to do this on their own at this stage in the process. Paul, in a couple of words, uh, how are you looking ahead to the next week? I'm looking f uh, no further forward than Sunday lunchtime, Manchester United against Liverpool in the Premiership. I'm a Liverpool fan. I've just received the gl gloomy news today that Howard Wells okay. is going to be referee, so I'm panicking. <laughs> That's it from The View for this week. Uh, I'll be standing in for Mark again on Sunday Politics on BBC One at 11.35. For now, though, bye-bye. I want to thank you all for the overwhelming support on the Trouble Lamb. Please do like and subscribe as it helps us to grow the channels and spread awareness on this terrible conflict. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our second channel, which deviates from mainstream documentaries and delves deeper into personal stories that have arisen from the conflict. Many thanks to all our Patreon members. If you haven't already, please do join for free. The link's in the description.